The search for a truly effective respirator is ages old. For thousands of years, men have suffered, yes, and died, because of the air they breathe. 500 years B.C., the Greeks discovered that metal miners had trouble in breathing. But that is all they knew about it. Around the beginning of the Christian era, the Romans learned what caused the trouble. Dust. So dye factory workers covered their faces with goat bladders, which enabled them to see a little and kept out the poisonous dust. A little. Almost 1,650 years later, a Dutch physician examined the lungs of a stone cutter who had died of asthma. They were so clogged with dust, he said, it seemed as though they were made of sand, and men continued inhaling stone dust. Fifty years later, an Italian doctor observed glass workers turning their covered faces away from the powders they were grinding. It didn't help. Men went on inhaling glass dust. A hundred and fifty years later, a Scotch professor of medicine wrote that stonemasons in Edinburgh usually suffered with lung trouble before reaching 50. But he didn't know why. It wasn't until 1902 that the British government appointed a committee of doctors to investigate the high death rate among miners. It took years of study and work to purify food. No less was required to clean the air. The problem was tackled from several angles. By watering dry jobs, dust is held down. Exhaust hoods suck it away, and air conditioning not only cools, but cleans the air. In some cases, one or more of these methods was sufficient. But in many others, something more was needed. A practical, economical device that would guarantee that no harmful amounts of dust or fume could enter a man's lungs. Since the Romans tried hiding their heads in goat bladders, men have known that the answer was some kind of screen to cover the nose and the mouth, one that would successfully filter out impurities. The difficulty lay in making a screen fine enough to trap the smallest particles, yet easy to breathe through and comfortable to wear. Throughout the world, people tried various devices, from a plain handkerchief through which you breathed in both air and dust, to elaborate masks through which you could hardly breathe at all. All kinds of materials were used. Gauzes, which kept out the big dust but let in the fine harmful particles, woolen fabrics which warmed the face but didn't clean the air, and wet sponges which didn't even warm the face. It seemed as though we'd never be able to clean the air we breathe.